I'm Dr. Stephen Macknick. And I'm Dr. Susana Martinez Conde. Happy, Happy 50th, 50th anniversary, anniversary Barrow. Barrow. Susanna had an epiphany for this fantastic experiment to study how eye movements uh, actually keep the world alive uh, and, and visible. And it was just a seminal moment for, for both our laboratories. We, we collaborated on the project afterwards and ended up with the cover of Scientific American. It used to be thought that when we look at an object and we fix our gaze on an object, our eyes don't move and that uh, or they move very little and this is unimportant. Uh, in my laboratory we, ha we have found out that these are tiny microscopic eye movements that we do make whenever we fix or gaze on an object are critically important to how we perceive the world. And another area that I think uh, both of our laboratories uh, are making a difference in how uh, visual neuroscience is as a field today is on the study of illusion. It uh, used to be thought that illusions are errors of perception, that they are the place where the visual system gets it wrong. But in fact, we're beginning more and more to realize and to demonstrate that illusions are critical to how we perceive the world. In fact, uh, everything that we see, it's uh, almost uh, always an illusion. We never have a perfect 100% correspondence between the world that is out there and how we see it. we realized that magicians were actually better at manipulating attention and awareness than neuroscientists were. And if we could just harness their techniques in the laboratory, we could increase the rate of discovering cognitive neuroscience, and it's worked beautifully ever since. One of the things that we're discovering working with magicians is that they manipulate emotions uh, in order to manipulate attention. And that is very interesting because in neuroscience there's not a really well understood connection between emotion and attention. Magicians know that we often look but we don't see and this is absolutely correct. It must be important to understanding the neuroscience of cognitive decline and diseases like uh, Alzheimer's disease where you both have problems in cognition and problems in, in kind of controlling emotions, emotional state and, and, and all of the emotive content that, that comes with a, with a disease of cognitive decline. Something that I find very inspiring about being here at the Barrow is the connection between basic research and the clinic and that's something that uh, ever since we moved here it has been at the forefront of both of our research programs. I think what Barrow is is one of the largest and most prestigious neurological institutes in the world. Um, it's been a fantastic place to be, not only when things are, are rich, but also with the tightening of the scientific economy in the U.S., it's been a wonderful place to be as well, um, because we're directly uh, related to the clinical enterprise here as well, and the research directly supports that. An area in which the Barrow is exceptional, and this is something that should interest any donor, is that we do not only conduct directly clinically applicable research, which is of course extremely important, but we also do the important basic fundamental research to understand the processes that are at the core of these diseases. And in the barrel we have the interaction between these two fields, which is something that puts us in a very unique place to find better tools for diagnosis and therapies in these diseases.